What is up guys and welcome back to the channel guys we're here with geography now norway definitely been enjoying geography now learning so much about different places of the world different countries uh a, a whole lot you know the people there the places there a lot of castles i think that's what intrigued me the most when i watched the video just amazed how many castles there are overseas you know i only only see castles on tv and stuff like that so but we finna check this out. Y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Hey, we learning about Norway. So send me more recommendations about Norway. Different videos. Hey, food, entertainment, all that stuff. Sports. Hey, I'll check it out. But let's jump into this one. Hey everyone, so I'm excited for this one. We recently did a geography in Oslo, Norway. And I had the honor to meet oh, many of you guys, dope. the Norwegian geography peeps, in your own country. It was amazing. Norway that's is a country cool. everyone has kind of heard about. Something about snow, ice, Vikings, skiing, I think trolls. But Norway is also a land of highly compounded history, tradition, postmodernism, and above all, landscape and people. Mm. And black metal. Yes, Keith is really excited <laughs> for this episode. <laughs> It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. We've done Denmark, Finland, Iceland, and now the fourth Nordic sister, Norway. Denmark, now, Finland. The Nordic I haven't did Norway Iceland yet. That's like the one that everyone here that. tries to call their best I did Denmark and Finland. Date. She smiles at the ground, pulls her hair behind her ear, and looks <laughs> up with those sky blue doe eyes that sparkle and says, Welcome to Norway. <laughs> what in the world? Norway plays a huge role in what it means to be Northern European. And when you look at it on the map, wow. you'll see that it's fascinating how well they've developed the civil infrastructure from a rugged half frozen peninsula. Oh, and <laughs> there's a town called Hell. First of all, the country, which kind of looks like the shape of a spoon, is located in Northern <laughs> Europe in the region known oh, as I do look like a spoon. just above the North Sea, bordering mostly Sweden to the east, Finland in the far north, and even a small sliver of Russia at the very end. Okay. This effectively means that Norway goes even further east than Finland and gets the entire Arctic Dang. coast from their neighbors neighbors sharing the Barren Sea with Russia. Apart from that, Norway has some overseas territories as well, two of which are in the Arctic Circle, the Svalbard Archipelago with only about 3,000 people, mostly in the largest town, wow. Longyearbyen, and the uninhabited Yan Mayan Island, Yan which was actually kind of traded with the UK for these islands in Canada in like 1930 when Canada was still British. Weird trade-off, but okay. After that, they have two <laughs> dependent territories, the Antarctic areas of Peter I Island and Bouvet Island, way down mm. south, neither of which are permanently inhabited and they also claim a portion of Antarctica known as Queen Maud Land. Going back to the mainland though, the country is currently, as of 2019, divided into 17 counties, or Fulker, oh. plus the unincorporated area Fulkers. of Svalbard, which, by the way, holds the northernmost permanently inhabited settlement in the world, with a population around Dang. 40 in the winter and 120 in the summer. The thing is, in 2020, the country will merge some of these counties into 11 regions. Already, North and South Trondelag have merged, and the final result in 2020 will look like this. The country's uh -huh. largest city and capital is all Oslo, located in the southeast. Uh, of course, I'm watching this. It's 2022, so I'm sure it already did. Y'all let me know in the comments if they already did. 2020 will look like this. The country's largest city and capital is Oslo, located in the southeast, Oslo. which also holds the largest like airport, I heard of Oslo, Oslo. Lufthavn International, as well as Oslo shipping port, the busiest shipping port in the country. A skip to the west, wow. you find the second largest city, Bergen, with of course the second largest heard airport, of Bergen. Bergen International. It is said that almost around 80% of the country lives within 10 kilometers of the ocean, and despite the rugged mountain. Mm terrain the nation has an extensive network of roads bridges and trains that cross virtually every region of the nation including the Laerdal tunnel the world's longest wow. road tunnel that stretches 24 kilometers long cutting through Dang, a mountain that looked pretty nice look how it's lit up and, and stuff. also the famous atlantic road that hops from island to island in the oh. modern romstal county now what's really fascinating is that norway kind of went from this to this and for a nation that has <laughs> never surpassed five and a half million in population it's pretty impressive how did this happen though well as the that looked goes, pretty in nice. The 60s, Denmark was like, Hey, Norway, you are just the best. I love you, man. And you know, just to prove it, I'm going to give you all this ocean water stuff. Wow, really? Ocean yeah. water stuff. Thanks. <laughs> this is Webflow Interactions. <laughs> the only funny tool on that brings all the animation power of CSS and JavaScript. Whoa, there's like a ton of oil here. Thanks, Denmark. Actually, it was the Geneva Convention like 10 years prior to that, but that story's kind of boring. Now, as you can clearly <laughs> tell, Norway has lots of access to the ocean. Due to all the serrated inlets and fjords, plus islands, they have the seventh largest coastline in the world. This also means Dang. that roads and bridges can only take you so far. And in order to get around the Norway's west coast, you'll see a lot, and I mean a lot, of ferries and ships. Dang. And what's cool is that, like some of their neighbors, Norway has a free roaming law in which you can pretty much camp out anywhere in nature as long as what? it is not on 
private property. We all know some towns in Norway are situated in the most picturesque wow. locations. Some like this town have no direct sunlight for six months because of the mountains, so they built giant mirrors to illuminate them. Fun fact, Long wow. is known for being both the brightest and darkest place on Earth. Because of its location on the Arctic Circle, it gets 110 continuous days of no sunshine and 95 days of no night. Also, they have an oh, emergency what? tank with over a million specimens built into the side of a mountain in case of the apocalypse. Man, it's just crazy how the world is sometimes. Man, that is different. Hey, if y'all don't know, I'm in Texas, so we I, I see a little bit of everything in one day just about, you know, for y'all to, for people in Norway or right there to only see sunlight, you know, just barely than the mountains blocking the sun. That's different. That is so they have that an emergency interesting. With over a million specimens built into the side of a mountain in case of the apocalypse and all plant life dies out on Earth. Also, technically, it's illegal to die in Svalbard. Because of the permafrost, bodies do not decompose, so you must either ship out your body or cremate it. Not sure what? how to segue out of that, but let's talk about cool places. Now, I asked some of you guys <laughs> in Norwegian geography what some of the top places to visit in Hello, pretty are, nice. And here are some of the suggestions you gave. Nordkap, the Viking Ship Nordkap. Museum, Nidaros Cathedral, the Dock of Bergen, the King's wow. Castle, Alt says igloo hotel from what Park and vigilant sculpture park, uh, igloo to to hotel the the dude fighting the babies this fortress <laughs> this iron age farm the world's largest moose sculpture wow. this whaling museum the world amundsen and edward munk monuments and grave the contiki museum the polaria mm. aquarium the eger viking style brewery the three swords monument so wow. many traditional stave I've churches seen. but this one is probably the most famous one i mean there's like a billion rocks named after body parts of trolls there's that weird boulder <laughs> jammed between two Cliffs, a mountain what? with a hole in it so it looks like it got shot by a gun so many ice kids that looked like i seen it on a movie between two cliffs a mountain with a hole in that looked like a screensaver right there. So it looks like it got shot by a gun. So many ice caves. The world's strongest whirlpool. So many fjords like Geronger oh, Fjord, North Fjord, Hardanger Fjord, Troll Fjord, Harrison Fjord. They were even supposed <laughs> to give Finland the peak of Mount Halti for their 100th birthday, but then it was kind of like, Happy 100th birthday, Finland! Thanks, Norway. So I heard that you're thinking of finally giving me the peak to my tallest mountain, right? Oh, oh yeah, sure, why not? Awesome. Well, <laughs> then, uh... Let me have it. Oh, see, there's this thing in my constitution called Article 1, which states that the kingdom of Norway is indivisible. So here's a taco. Indiv yeah, Norwegians <laughs> actually really love tacos, which makes the perfect opportunity hey, to transition into. I love tacos. Into I love tacos. Now, if you know anything about Norway's land, you'll know this one word, fjords, fjords, fjords. The fjords. word is even Norwegian. And it's interesting how it became that way. Basically, like many other areas in the north, the country is a post-glacial peninsula with over 50,000 islands that wow. at one point was completely covered in ice. Over time, the ice melted, eroding the rock beneath, creating the incredibly indented coastline of steep, jagged cliffs and fjords. Of the coast, fjords. the largest and deepest fjord is Sognefjord, and it is the third largest in the world, extending over 200 wow. kilometers inland. This means that much of the country is divided into regions of choppy fjord stuff to the west and the connected hilly and valley stuff to the south and southeast. Mm. Everything pretty much falls either within the alpine boreal climate or further up north, arctic. Keep in mind that due to Svalbard and Jan Mayen, the Norwegian economic zone extends to the majority of the Norwegian Sea and much of the Barents, as well as the North Sea to the south. This is called the NCS or Norwegian Continental Shelf. Here the largest deposit of underwater oil is found that supplies Norway with much of its Underwater oil. Skip to the east you find yeah. the largest lake, Lake Musa, which is just parallel to the longest river in the country, the Glama, which drains all the way into the North Sea in the south and has a drainage basin that covers about 13% of the country's land. A little skip mm. to the west in the center, you find the longest and most dominant mountain chain, the Scandinavian Mountains, where you can find the tallest peak, Galdhubigen, which is also the tallest in all of the Nordics. Ooh, if we are cold. discussing the overseas territories, then Svalbard is pretty much an Arctic archipelago of glaciers, this one being the largest in wow. all of Europe, and the rest are mostly just cold valleys. Jan Mayen Island is the only place with an active volcano in Norway. The Berenberg Peak last erupted in 1980. Otherwise, if we skip all the way south to the Antarctic, Bouvet and Peter I Islands are dormant Ooh. volcanic islands, Bouvet considered the most remote island in the world, and both of which are nearly completely covered in ice and only inhabited Dang. by seals and birds. Now, keep in mind about the oil thing though, although they export lots of it, gas is actually still super expensive. According to globalpetrolprices.com, as of 2019, it is just over... 
Seven dollars per gas. Mm. For seventeen point two krone per That's liter, making it one of the most expensive places to get gas in the world. Oh. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. This is partially because in 1990 they initiated the much. government pension fund Global. This is a national wealth fund run by the government to subsidize pensions when oil dependence runs dry. Now Norway has lots of natural resources and clever ways Not of managing them, the making them some. I got sheep on a beach. <laughs> what of a paragon for development few other nations can compare with. Challenge accepted. But for what it's worth, they have a unique <laughs> system locked and loaded. And now it is time for my triple shot of espresso break. Usually this is the part where Noah comes in, but Noah is out of town. So let's give this to <laughs> Keith. Now, everyone knows that Norway is quite a prosperous nation, but just how prosperous is it? Let's just put it this way. <laughs> they export more than they import and not just petroleum products. Fish alone makes up about 10% of their exports mm, and they are I the highest fish. exporter of salmon out of any other country salmon. in the world. I just love Voss water. It's expensive and it's Norwegian. So, you know, it probably came from like oh. a mystical glacier or something. Yeah, no, that's basically just our tap water. I wash my dishes with that stuff every day. <laughs> but it's expensive and Norwegian. And you fell for it. <laughs> ah, just got tricked. Otherwise, the majority of the energy in Norway comes from hydroelectric power. Norway became one of the first countries to adopt a carbon tax back in 1991. Although cutting down trees is still done on a smaller scale, they were the first country to ban mm. deforestation. They have Europe's largest herd of reindeer. They have lots of birds like puffins, wow. whales, and orcas love swimming off the coast. In the Arctic, you can find and polar bears and walruses. And now, food. Like a new. Norwegian food is known for being either really oh, no, nice, warm and cozy, or straight up disgusting. They Hold up now. That was a head on a plate. Norwegian food is known for being either really nice, warm and cozy, or straight up. What? I don't know if that's a cow or a horse. I don't know what that I couldn't I I probably wouldn't eat that. I ain't gonna, I can't, they love their I can't. fish. You have some interesting fish dishes like lutefisk and rockfisk. Some other dishes include things like various types of porridge, pickled herring, kumla, oh. reindeer made in various ways, meatballs and brown sauce, krum kaka, brown cheese, oh. these Christmas dishes, and the national dish fotokal. However, if you ask a Norwegian, they might tell you the new national dish of Norway is tacos. They might have some questionable ingredients on the table for you to add like mayonnaise or cucumbers. And I mean, come on, Mexico, even you break your own rules all the time and mix things up in your own country. So let the Norwegians have their fun. And speaking of Nor- I eat taco, I don't add just anything though, but I'm sure that taco meat is probably reindeer meat. All the time and mix things up in your own country. So let the Norwegians have their fun. And speaking of Norwegians, have fun. Oh, and speaking of Norwegians having fun. Oh, and speaking of Norwegians having fun. <laughs> you told us what you want. I said this how you say it. We built it for you. Editor X, Dang. the advanced website. Thank you, Keith. Norwegians have a saying, <laughs> they are born with skis. The word even comes from the ancient Norse word skith, which means split wood. Skeet. If there was any kind of apex cold winter type of people on earth, Norwegians would take the gold. <laughs> and they literally do take the gold. Like they have more Winter Olympics gold medals than oh, any other country. Snap. First of all, the country has about 5.3 million people. And as of 2018, has the highest human development index out of any country in the world. At about 84%, mm. the country is made up primarily of people that identify as ethnically Norwegian, including about 60,000 indigenous Sami people. About 8.3% of the population is other European descent, mostly Western Europe, and the remaining population is made up of other people groups from outside of Europe, from various regions of Africa, oh, Asia, wow. mostly from countries like Pakistan, Somalia, Morocco, Iraq, and Kurdish people. They use the Norwegian krone as their currency, they use the types C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Interesting to note that they are nope. not part of the EU, but part of the European Economic Area and Free Trade Association. In fact, Norway is a kingdom, currently under the headship of King Harald V. However, his role is mostly representative and ceremonial his executive powers are limited and most government is ruled by the parliament essentially though although some would argue vikings kind of started in denmark it really kicked off in norway oh. norwegian vikings did kind of all the exploring and colonizing and raiding and killing you know viking stuff and no they did not wear <laughs> helmets with horns language wise norway actually has two official languages norwegian and sami the language of the minority northern indigenous peoples that have lived sami in the frigid people? regions for millennia the norwegian language however is kind of confusing though because it kind of has two 
different writing systems that everybody must learn in school. Nunorsk wow. and Bukmol. What exactly are they? Well, it kind of goes like this. Hey, we've been in a union with the Danish for centuries and now they are gone. We can speak our own language freely. Woohoo! But we've been writing our language in the Danish style for so long. I mean, what do we do? Do we change it? Hi, I'm Ivo Olsen, and I say yes. I'm Eager. going to listen to all the dialects of Norwegian and come up with a weird fusion thing that can work for everyone. <laughs> I'll call it New Norsk. We can teach it in schools, and everyone can be free of Danish influence. Uh... And today, the Danish style book mall is still used by about 85% of the population. Weird side note, the word ha can mean almost anything in Norway. For example, ha. Ha? Ha. Ha. Speaking of which, like many of their <laughs> other neighbors, Norwegians have 13 years of school, graduating at age 19. And when Norwegians okay, are just about ready to take oh. their final exams, they go on a three-week party called Rus. And just look it up. What? Norway has lots of different dialects. Here are some of you guys, Norwegian geography peeps, explaining. Hey, my name is Talina. In standard Norwegian, you might say Vores, but in Egosun area, you say Okas. In the west, you could say Gisna mm. Leiro. And in the north, maybe Kurarti. In Oslo, you would say something along the lines of Det er ikke lett, skjønner du? I Trøndelag County, det er ikke lett, sjø. So in standard Norwegian, oh. you would say Søppel. But in Bergen, we say boss. Thank you. Otherwise, there are so many other things that's a lot. That's a lot to learn. Talk about in terms of your culture, and here is random Hannah with culture stuff. Norway is a land loaded with tradition and folklore. Many of you have already heard of things like trolls and elves, but there's also scary beings like the Holdra, not Mara, and the Nuk. Pretty much all Norwegians are outdoorsy people. Hiking and cross-country skiing are national pastimes, hands down. Almost everyone owns some kind of Mari sweater. That's a nice sweater. With traditional patterns knitted onto the upper parts, usually in the national colors of. I all rock that. I like that Many sweater. Norwegians That's a nice sweater. Own small cabins in the woods, and they actually like to brag about how bad their cabins can be <laughs> as in how technologically disconnected hey, i've seen are. the movie the cabin minutes, in the woods no wi-fi no electricity no plumbing you're hardcore speaking of bragging in norway do that, it's considered do that. super cool to come back from vacation and show off your tan because it's kind of hard to get a tan in norway the nobel peace prize <laughs> is also awarded in oslo every year in norway everyone's income and wealth is on public record mostly but for what it's worth the nation does this to help prevent tax evasion and finally mm. we cannot skip the boon odds these are traditional Ooh, costumes nuts. of Norway that come in so many different varieties based on the region and town you are from. They are mostly worn for special occasions, especially for May 17th, the country's national day, where they mm. march to the castle in Oslo. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's All right, pretty dope. Out of here. I want to talk about music. <laughs> Traditionally, Norwegians the have their own regional folk music and dances called Bugdi Dance. Traditional Boogie instruments include dance. things like dulcimers, goat horn, willow flute. Ooh, the traditional folk music eventually found a way to fuse with one of the most popular genres of Norway today metal or specifically folk Norwegian metal. folk metal bands. Not I've never heard that, of folk black metal. metal was started supposedly in Norway and it has since been a domineering genre Dang. many people have been playing for decades. That's it for me. <laughs> Thank you again, Keith. <laughs> anyway, we gotta move on. History. In the quickest way I can put it, Viking Age. This dude unites Norway into one kingdom. Vikings invade and take over a ton of other places Dang. like England. Christianity. Old Kingdom. Black Plague. Union of Kalmar. Denmark takes over. Lutheranism. Sweden takes over. Not Constitution Luther. established. First wave of immigrants to America. They finally leave Sweden. World War I. Neutral. Women's suffrage. World War II. Neutral again, but Germany doesn't care. Joins NATO Dang. and European Free Trade Association. Oil boom. They vote and reject EU membership. Host the Winter Olympics in Lille. Hammer, largest underwater gas pipeline in the world open. Oslo Dang. grows and more immigrants come in. And here we are today. I asked you Norwegian geography peeps for some notable people from Norway or of Norwegian descent. And here are some of the ones you suggested we put in this video. Eric the Red, so many past Vikings and Eric Kings, blah, blah, blah. Edward Gregg, Edward Munch, these riders, these cross country skiers, Roald oh, Edmundsen, Magnus. I might know those skiers. Maybe. These riders, these. Uh. Nah, I don't think I know that. Cross country them. skiers, Roald Amundsen, Magnus Carlsen, Max Magnus, Tor Heyerdahl, Fritjof Nansen. So many musicians like these people. Let me see. Nope, I haven't heard of them. As well as actors Dang. like these people. And of course, the royal family. Seriously though, did you guys watch the movie Kontiki? It's pretty good. I mean, his migration theory was I still need to check that out. That do look good. Hey, you did a cool thing, man. And that's the thing about Norwegians. They're so Kontiki. globally intrepid. They reach out to the far corners. And with that, they've also made a lot of friends. Which brings us to... The friend zone. 
friend zone. Hulu Ad Manager is the easy way for businesses like yours to advertise on Hulu. Now, Norwegians are known for being very level-headed and nice, but they do know who they support and stand by no matter what. First of all, Switzerland is kind of like their weird alternate parallel universe twin that shares a lot in common with them. They both are not part of the EU. They both are very financially stable, yet expensive to live in. They both have mountains wow. and snow, and they both have similar values in general affairs. They get along pretty well and enjoy sharing the ski stories. The UK is a very close friend, especially Scotland due to their shared Viking history. Ooh. They even give them a Christmas tree every year to say thanks for helping in World War Nice. Two, their king and government were taken in from exile as the Germans tried to invade. Nepal has close ties. As another mountain nation, they've taken much interest and send much aid to their programs. High-profile politicians have visited in the past, like their Minister of Environmental Development, Eric Solheim, and the Prime Minister of Nepal visited Norway as well. For the USA, mm -hmm. they have a very close connection, not only in diplomacy, government, and business, but specifically to the diaspora living in the USA, and specifically the state of Minnesota. Nearly a million Norwegian Americans live in this one state what? alone. The USA holds more people of Norwegian heritage than which probably makes sense because Minnesota is pretty cold. Norwegian you know? Americans live in this one state alone. The USA holds uh. more people of Norwegian heritage than any other country outside of Norway. With I never as knew that. There never are knew in that. Norway. They even have a. I mean, I probably met somebody from Norway and didn't know. In heritage than any other country outside of Norway, with almost as many as there are in Norway. They even have a game show called Alt for Norge, in which Norwegian Americans see the homeland Alt of their Norge. ancestors. They cry and act way too dramatic, which is entertaining. The winner gets to meet their Norwegian relatives, and the losers get a book telling them information, but they don't get to meet their relatives, which is kind of messed up, but it's oh, a game show, what do you expect? Up. Anyway, when it comes to their best friends, pretty much what I've heard is a mix between all the Nordics, but specifically Iceland, Denmark, and Sweden. Iceland is like their party friend they love to go on adventures with. They're also kind of like the preserved Norse nation that their ancestors colonized, which holds a dear spot in their hearts. Today, they have a defense agreement that allows the Norwegian Air Force to survey and patrol the mm. Icelandic airspace as well. Denmark and Norway, however, are always kind of fighting for Norway's so affection. Both these nations in the past have fought each other and ruled over Norway under separate kingdoms. All three countries were at one point part of the Kalmar Union. They can relatively understand each other when they talk. Swedish is closer to Norwegian, though. They are all part of NATO, the Council of Europe, and many people from each of wow. these nations end up marrying and having families together. In conclusion, Norway's prosperity doesn't stop with their will for gritty cold adventure. They've scaled the South Pole, the icebergs, the glaciers, and the tundras. It's almost as if the ice keeps them warm. <laughs> Stay tuned, Oman is coming up next. That will make sense though. Hey, no, definitely, definitely enjoyed that one. Hey, just some takeaways. The little, uh, it looked like the ice glacier, little hotel or something that said. Hey, the food, mm, I don't know about the food. Y'all gonna have to show me something, show me something. I, Cause I, I just seen a whole like cow head or something on a plate or a reindeer head or something. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't even like eating fish with the head on it, you know, but I definitely look like a place to visit. Maybe times where it's warm because it looks it looked like a beautiful country. Times where well, I don't do the cold because I know the cold probably over there is a little, little different. I'm in Texas, so sometimes 60 is a little too cold for me, you know, sometimes not too much because usually we, our temperature now has been like 20 and 30. So even 50 degrees, it's, it feel better because the wind's not blowing too much. So it feel a little bit warm after you experience the cold, cold. But hey, I'm a, I, I, I'm a summer type of guy. You know what I'm saying? Spring, maybe not too much rain, but definitely enjoy that guy. Y'all send some more videos my way about Norway. Particularly, let's start with the food. Let's just start with the food. Find me something about food in Norway because... I, 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 yeah, I'm a food person. I ain't gonna lie, I'm a food guy, but I didn't, I don't know about that reindeer head on the plate. But guys, I enjoyed this. Y'all hit that subscribe button, send out more recommendations. That's all I have. Y'all be blessed, be the best, and be you. I'm out.